Something that can be a huge barrier to entry for a lot of formats in Magic the Gathering is the price. Standard has rares and mythics that sometimes bleed into other formats, meaning their price incredibly inflated, while Modern and Legacy have expensive lands and staple cards that are hard for newer players to pick up, making the format feel impossible to access from square zero. Commander's no stranger to this either. With cards that stretch across the history of Magic, you're bound to have some weirdo old cards that cost a billion dollars for no apparent reason. This combined with perceived staple cards, owning just about any deck with a reasonable power level is going to have you shelling out hundreds of dollars. But what if I told you we could win the game in one turn with a $20 deck? Maelstrom Wander is one of my favorite commanders of all time and has an incredibly powerful effect. Besides giving everything haste, the ability to cascade into two free spells is bonkers. And the fact that the original CMC is eight means it can anything from Birds of Paradise to Old Nabo. We're, we're not playing either of those, however. In fact, we're playing hardly any spells in our deck. One of the most popular decks in modern currently is Living End. It's a hybrid combo reanimator deck that uses high-cost cycling creatures and cascade spells in tandem to reanimate a large, threatening board as early as turn three. The way it does this is having every card of the deck cost three or more, so that when a cascade spell is cast, it always hits the zero mana living end. We'll be using a similar design philosophy in our deck, making the only hits for both cascades into a one-two punch that takes out the table in one swing. However, since it'd be pretty hard to build a deck that's only eight drops, I took the easier route. There are only two spells in this deck. You see, since the Cascade Trigger only stops when you hit a non-land card, all we have to do is make our deck the two things we want to hit off Maelstrom Wanderer's Cascades and 97 lands. Sure, it seems a little ridiculous, but this is the most effective way to always put the two-card combo into play. So, what's our two-card combo? People have done this sort of thing with Maelstrom Water before, using Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker and Zealous Conscripts to win the game instantaneously with the classic Splinter Twin style victory. My concerns with this combo aren't about its effectiveness, but rather the cost. Kiki Jiki on its own is around $8 at the cheapest, and when trying to construct a sub $20 deck that already has the $9 Maelstrom Wanderer, there's hardly any room in the budget for helpful lands. That's why my combo pieces of choice are Turn Timber Ranger and Maskwood Nexus. With the Ranger coming in at less than 50 cents and the Nexus floating around a dollar and a half, we still have the potential to win with the same efficiency as the Kiki Jiki combo. Here's how the combo itself works. We cast Maelstrom Water and get two Cascade Triggers. Ideally, both of the spells are still in our deck and we Cascade into both of them. If we Cascade into the Ranger and then the Nexus, the Nexus will enter the battlefield before the Ranger and the ranger will enter the battlefield and make a wolf. But wait, since Maskwood Nexus is in play, the wolf is not only a wolf, but also an ally, which will re-trigger the turn timber ranger and make another wolf ally. This repeats for as long as we want until we have uh, as many wolves as we need, and then our maelstrom waterer will finally resolve and give all of our creatures haste, letting us swing out and kill the table. If we cascade into the Nexus first, the turn timber ranger will come into play first, making a wolf and getting one counter. Then, since the Nexus will come into play before the Maelstrom Wanderer, Maelstrom Wanderer will be the ally that triggers the Turn Timber Ranger, letting us combo off and swing out anyways. The most important part of this deck is the large amount of lands we have to play, and using those lands to the best of our ability to try either stay alive at the table we're playing at, or ramp ahead fast enough that we can combo before someone else does. Obviously, $20 isn't a lot to work with, but I think there are a lot of powerful inclusions at very cheap dollar amounts. I've included the full cycle of man lands in our colors because having blockers and attackers early in the game can help if we've got to stabilize, or can just progressively chip in at people in the pod. Rage Green is an excellent example of this, getting a counter every time we activate it so that the damage scales upwards and we can start getting really threatening. The temple cycle is also really helpful in this deck, helping to fix our mana but also scry away the combo pieces if they happen to be on top of our deck. I'd say the safest bet is to always keep a land on top, as the odds of you drawing a spell are much higher if you bottom a land. Other helpful and not often used cycle of lands that come in clutch for this deck are the storage lands from Mercadian Masks. Since we're going to be passing with a lot of mana open every turn, these just slowly stack up counters and give us the large burst of mana we need to accelerate an early Maelstrom Wander into play. The same can be said of some of these sacrifice lands I've chosen to include. That can help us pay for activating man lands or abilities of our other lands, but also sacrificing for an extra mana to help us cast Maelstrom Water one or two turns earlier. Some cards I would usually hesitate to include in other decks are also wildly impressive in this shell. 
Blighted Woodland, Temple of the False God, and Myriad Landscape all have the ability to accelerate us by one mana, and since we're more likely to always have enough mana to reliably activate them, they're just straight up pieces of ramp on our deck. There are two lands with some higher price tags in this deck that I think are worthy of an include just from pure efficiency. Terrain Generator, with our high land count, lets us rampant growth every turn after it's come into play, while Untadaki the Cloud Keeper is an effective plus one to our mana towards casting Maelstrom Wander. It may not seem like it, but every mana we add is a turn shorter towards ending the game. The vast majority of the lands in our deck are basic, which is a boon in many ways. A lot of land hate in the format is centered around non-basic lands, which means that even though we do have things that are affected by these spells, we're largely in the clear from the most oppressive downsides, even in our three-color deck. All in all, I think that budget magic is something that can be very rewarding to build. The more harsh of a restriction you impose on yourself, the more creative you have to be with building something that can stand up to the average table. A lot of commander games are getting faster and faster, and although this is a deck that ends the game as soon as it casts its commander, it's on the slower side. This is the final visual of the deck list, which is pretty funny to see laid out with just two spells. I hope that if you give it a shot, you'll let me know how it goes in the comments or on my Twitter at Cascade Cascades. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, and consider subscribing to my channel if you're wanting to see more magic strategy videos and deck techs. Thanks for watching.